What's going on YouTube? It's your boy DMT and today I'm coming at you guys with a $150 budget challenge deck profile for Salaman Great. I know it's been a minute since I've uploaded and I apologize again for the infrequent schedule. It's just that COVID has everything, you know, topsy-turvy. But uh, today I just wanted to bring you guys this video just to kind of give you guys a little bit of something to wrap your head around. Uh, I know that uh, there's a lot of budget players. There's always going to be, especially in the middle of COVID. So I wanted to bring you guys this video as kind of an option, uh, as kind of a, a higher tier of expense than my Zodiac profile was. Uh, but I wanted to bring you guys this video so you can see kind of what you can get when you are able to spend a little bit more uh, in terms of a budget deck. So I have tabled out everything and uh, I'm going to kind of go over some of what I found out about budget salad. So in a similar vein to last time, we once again will not be considering uh, shipping. It will just be straight up what can we afford within a hundred dollar budget or in this case a $150 budget. So that being said, here are the choices that I came up with just so you guys can have a look and we can talk about my card choices in theory uh, once we look at everything on paper. So here's the list. I think this is pretty much a standard Salaman great list uh, for this current format. Uh, given a few changes, there's no access code talker uh, in the side deck is a little bit slimmed back compared to other things like triple evenly or uh, triple solemn judgment just because I could not really justifiably fit those inside the budget. So that being said, I guess we can go ahead and get on into the card choices themselves. All right, so starting us off, we got three copies of Foxy. It's just your duality for a salad card, and you can pitch something to pop a back row that's already up, like a summon limiter. There can be only one. Um, three copies of Spinny as your level three extender. You play it even though Mirage Stallio is banned, just because it's such a good extender. One Gazelle, one Falco. This card's really good in the grind game, letting you reset Rage and Roar from your graveyard. After that, moving on for more extenders, we've got two copies of Jack Jaguar. Being able to play two of them is really good because if we banish one off Desires, we really need to see the other one as it does help us facilitate our grind game with uh, Sunlight Wolf. Um, then we've got two copies of Foul. This lets us make rank fours like Dweller and Baguska a lot more easily. Then additionally, after that, we've also got three copies of our Omni Searcher for the deck, which is Lady Debug. Uh, Lady Debug is basically a starter. Uh, this card's not always the best on its own, but if you have a spinning or gazelle on hand or so something that can summon Lady itself. Debug is really good. Moving on, we've got three copies of Parallel Exceed. This card is basically a one-card Abyss Dweller or a one-card Baguska on its own. Three copies of Ash Blossom just for generic hand traps and three copies of Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit. I think these are the best two hand traps that you can play on this budget just because it's, the, a Ghost Ogre stops Numeron Network and Ash Blossom stops everything else. Moving on to the spells, we have three copies of Sign Up Mining. This card's super duper cheap now because of the reprint in the Mega Ten. One copy of Salaman Great Circle. Then we've got one copy of Sanctuary, searchable in the combo, three copies of Will for an additional extender. This card's really good. Foolish Burial just to send Jaguar and Spinny. Three copies of Pot of Desires. Uh, this is debatable. You probably should be playing two, not three, uh, but I am very greedy with this card. I actually really like it a lot uh, in testing. Two Rage and Two Roar. Uh, these are the trap lineups that I'm really, really liking just because if you banish them off Desires, you still have a chance to see one of them and you can still send them off Gazelle if you get to Gazelle. So that's pretty much it for the main deck. On to the extra deck, three copies of Bay Links. This card has actually gone up in price. I think it's around five or six dollars now uh, because it hasn't had a reprint and it's from a structure deck that was very, very popular. Uh, but you still want to play three just because 
it's kind of standard like you really need it especially for the grind game and if your board does get broken it's much easier to make a bailings and then make a sunlight wolf after you make the bailings than just hard making sunlight wolf speaking of sunlight wolf three sunlight wolf three heat two heat we all mean one phoenix one unicorn borolo dragon uh boral sword dragon uh, Boral Sword is a lot of what took up the $150 budget. You don't have to play it, but you can. Uh, one Baguska, one Tornado Dragon, and one Abyss Dweller. These are your rank 4s that you can play just because you have Foul and such. For your sideboard, you're looking at 3 DD Crow. This is probably standard this format in everybody's side deck, either this or Cosmic Cyclone. Uh, Artifact Sanctum and Scythe. And Lancias, uh, these are up to personal discretion, but this is what I found would work. Finally, last but not least, three copies of Different Dimension Ground. This is good against a lot of matchups. Uh, dinosaurs, Synchro Eldlich, uh, a lot of different decks actually struggle to out DDG, and it can actually win you the game. So I decided to play three of it. So all in all, guys, I think this is a pretty decent list for what you can probably afford on a $150 budget. So without further ado, why don't we go ahead and look how close to $150 we actually came. And I'll talk a little bit more about the deck afterwards. So the total price of the deck, including shipping, was $148.62, which is where I anticipated the deck ending up just because there are some cards like we kind of talked about earlier that you just can't really fit that much on a budget. Things like Boral Sword Dragon, Ash Blossom, things like Phalanx, Lady Debug, all those kind of add up. But at the end of the day, you still are able to hit that threshold, ahem, excluding taxes and shipping. You are able to hit that threshold of $150 playing Salad. Also considering this initial investment isn't exactly the end of the deal, as with upgrades you can get cards like Access Code Talker. Nibiru is definitely a big one because that card is starting to see play again, and it is a very, very good card if you can afford that, even though it is over the $150 budget. Dark Ruler No More is another good one, although that's more of a staple nowadays in the side deck. I would definitely recommend getting three copies of Dark Ruler No More if you can, because going against combo boards with Salad might be a bit of a problem, just because with Appalooza's four monster negates, you're probably not going to be able to establish much of a board under Appalooza's negates, but also things like Borlode Savage and Herald of the Arclight, especially Herald of the Arclight, because like it, that thing makes you not have a graveyard, so being able to like banish everything you send in a graveyard is uh, pretty good against salad uh, also infinite impermanence for that matter i should also mention that it's in perm is a very good upgrade just because it's another hand trap it helps you go second and uh yeah but overall guys i think salad is probably a really really good tier two-ish deck that you can pick up and play this format it does have a lot of good matchups across the metagame. Somewhat to a degree, I can name some of them off the top of my head. I'm not going to think of all of them. But things like Dinosaur, things like Altergeist, Guru Control. Uh, even to some degree, like some Dragma variants uh, can have a bit of an easy time uh, against some Dragma variants just because... You don't really care that much about Dragma Punishment because your Sunlight Wolf can just protect itself. Also, you play a lot of Hand Traps, so if they're playing like the Invoked variant, you're able to stop them with things like DD Crow and Ogre and Ash. So overall, I think this deck has a lot of potential. Against decks like Infernoble Knight, you can just Hand Trap them into death. But I think there is a lot of room for experimentation with this deck, this format. So if you are looking to get into Yu-Gi-Oh! on a somewhat budget deck, I mean, this isn't as cheap as Zodiac is, but uh, this is still a very good option if you're looking to play on a budget. So I would absolutely recommend it, especially towards newer players. 
as it gives you basically every relevant summoning mechanic besides synchro summoning. So you're learning as you're playing. But at any rate, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please feel free to leave comments and suggestions down in the comment section below. It's me, it's me, it's that DMD, and your boy is out. Do my own beat.